Hey everyone, Daniel with HRT, and today we're going to do a little bit of a mid-tier rifle loadout. So we're going to take uh, what's kind of like a middle-range price point rifle. This is a BCM, and then we're going to deck it out with some extra gear, some optics, some lights, things like that. Um, kind of walk through some of the theory of concepts, and just a, a very simple, it's not really a build, more of a just kidding out for a, maybe a duty rifle. <laughs> Just a quick highlight of what we're going to put on here. We have a Razer uh, Gen 2 1 to 6. We're going to use an ADM riser. We've got the AWLS light here, the full size body. And then we're going to put some of the 100 Concepts light cap stuff on there. And then we have the scope cap as well for the Razer. And then we're going to put a vertical foregrip on there, an Edgar Sherman Design Sling, some Magpul QDs. Um, and then, not pictured, but eventually we're going to put on a Surefire muzzle device and we'll take this out to the range and shoot it suppressed. So, a couple little projects there and it'll be a, a quick build per se here and we'll get this all mounted up. So check it out. So up first, I'm just gonna put the light on here, um, the easiest piece to put on here. And since the AWLS is ambidextrous, I'm gonna set it up best to get a nice high mount. So we'll push this out of the way here. So instead of mounting it like this, I'm gonna flip it around and put it up top. And I'm gonna push it out to the end here so that it kinda, once we put a suppressor on it especially, we get some extra uh, throw in front of the can itself. All right, now we have our AWLS mounted there on the right-hand side of the gun. You can change that maybe however you want. I'm just gonna throw it on that side for now. Um, underneath here is a click cap, so if you prefer that, you can use that. Um, or you can use the ODA that's screwed into the back here. And if we really wanted to get picky, we could change the sensitivity on that. Um, that's not the point of this build, so I'm not gonna do that. But if you did have an AWLS, you can change how sensitive your activation is there. Now this would allow me to reach over and activate that light in this manner. So while we're doing that, let's move on to the next step here. So if I'm gonna hold the gun here and I'm gonna activate the light here and I wanna use that vertical grip, then I'm gonna probably wanna put it about right there. So that'll give us a good indicator of where we wanna mount that vertical grip. So that's gonna be the third slot for me. Um, if you wanna set it up like Daniel Defense does straight out of the box, you can put it at the very front. You can look kinda goofy. I won't judge you. Silently, I will judge you. And this is the stubby as well, so it's a little bit shorter, which is kind of nice. Uh, a 12 foot long vertical grip like the Knight's Armament ones are. Or the grip pod, for those of you who have the grip pod. So I'm gonna show off a little issue here that we just ran into. So based on how I set up the light, my ideal position felt the most comfortable was putting this grip right here. But as I'm putting the screws in through the M-Lock spot, it is contacting the gas block because the screw's too long. So technically I could just push that screw up, but now I'm gonna impinge upon the barrel in an upward motion. It's gonna throw off all my zeros and it's also gonna be negative when the gun starts to heat up. That's gonna transfer that heat. It's gonna potentially throw off how the gun's actually gonna shoot. So we're gonna move this back one slot because that's not really a good spot to mount it. Uh, I think we can split the difference between two of these, so we'll try that next. Uh, but you definitely don't wanna put a screw up against the gas block right like that. That's a really bad idea. Also ruins the entire purpose of having a free-floated barrel. All right, so now we have no contact with the barrel. You can see this is angled, and in this case, it's angled slightly back. You can just flip it and angle it forward if you happen to prefer that, so do keep that in mind. Um, I don't really have a preference, I'm fine either way, but if you wanted your hand kind of do this motion, then you'd wanna put this facing forward. And since we're working down on this end, I'm gonna put this sling mount that, that uh, BCM sends. Um, I'm gonna randomly throw this somewhere. I'm not super particular about this personally. I'm just gonna throw it up here towards the back of the receiver. I'm sorry, back of the rail. All right, we've got our T's lined up in there. Sling mount's attached. And we'll make sure these uh, actually work on here. They better. Get a nice lock into those detents there as well. Try like that. We'll put our scope cap on, or light cap, excuse me. And you can 
watch. They have a video on how to put these on. Um, I've already done it on another rifle. Mostly remember it, but if you've got a set of these, they've got a really nice video telling you how to set it up. Um, I will need to eventually cut these on the end once we get it all set up, but that's a later problem. I'm gonna say the best way to retain this is going through the back of the mount here. And we'll come back up and we'll make this nice and tight and we'll put our knot here. And we'll probably wanna make that even a little bit tighter, but that'll get us started. Now, normally this would be used to keep this um, nice and tight on here based on the way that the AW, AWLS mount is created. I don't really think we're gonna have an issue with that, but I am gonna put that, um, let's say on the head itself. See, we have all that extra now. I'm gonna take a bunch of that off and then did not bring anything to the studio here, but um, ideally we'll cut this and then we'll use some type of heat to seal that over. So that's a, a later step. We'll do that before we take it on the range. But that gets us our scope cap, sorry, light cap attached. And this isn't necessary. You don't need one of these, uh, but I do like it if you're gonna potentially use this as a maybe under nods or something like that and you don't want any type of reflection coming off of your front lens. So it's just a nice little handy piece to block that from ever happening. Is it needed? Depends on your job. I have one of these on my rifle, which you can see on that, that wall back there. Um, I really like the way they've set these rings up. They're very intuitive and easy to set up. Um, we'll, we'll still torque them down with our fix it stick stuff. Hopefully through the magic of editing, you haven't sat here and watched me take out eight screws for the last couple minutes. Um, so sorry about that. But this would be probably the most time consuming process of getting this set up is just gonna be our mounting of the optics because we do want them to be level. We wanna ensure that we're torquing them properly. We're not over tightening something. And we're also doing everything you know, straight and pointed the right way and things like that. It's kind of worthless if you put your scope on and then it's not straight, it's not level, you can't actually use it. So for the purpose of this video, we're gonna use just this uh, fairly inexpensive stand here. Um, I am gonna get out some levels. This is by no means perfect, but we're gonna try to get it at least close. And then we'll see what happens when I actually get out to the range with it. If you are really mounting this, I would advise to use your actual tools. Um, I have some fix it sticks levels, but I don't really have a good way to level this gun. Um, at home, I have a vise that I can actually level. So I would recommend that. Um, we'll do what we can here today, but just keep in mind that if you're doing this uh, on a little more serious end, we just don't have the, the equipment here, but I do highly advise that. This is our very fancy razor. It'll be a nice color there until we paint everything. And now I've got this nicely mounted in here. I'm gonna move all my parts out of the way. All right, now we have a rifle back up here. So we're gonna put this optic on. The ADM mount has a nice little locking adjustment tab on here. Um, we'll see if we need to adjust these screws or not. I don't think so. BCM's tolerances are pretty solid, but we will see. That sets nicely in there. I'm gonna just align this rear eyepiece with the charging handle. Uh, again, they can move it if they want. That is super loose. So we're gonna have to do that adjustment like I was talking about. That's good. Nice lock, I'm not feeling any wiggle. So now we have our optic mounted up on here. We've got our light with our um, light cap on here. We've got our sling mounts and we've got our ADM on here. So let's go ahead and get our sling on here. Looks like we can do another loop there. So this is a nice thing to do if you want something to never move. Um, if you've ever had a rifle that's all of a sudden come out of its sling. So we'll pull these through using these uh, giant oversized pliers. All right, so now this won't come out because it has to back out two separate times before it can come loose. This is a really nice and secure. If we're worried about noise, we might want to fix that maybe some tape or something like that. For now, it's not really a big deal, and that's still nice and secure there. So when it's done, it should need flipped over again, um, but you can do a lot of adjustment from this side instead of that side, so we'll leave it like that. This is one of the adjustable slings, so this little locking tab allows us to back sling off and forward, and then we have a little shock cord section here as well. So I can pull it in either direction, tighten it, loosen it, so on. All right, so we got everything attached on here, ready to go. Let's go get it painted and we'll head out to the range.
All right, guys, so we're back in, from the range here with the BCM build that we did, or, or assembly of parts of the upgrade. Um, we ran a couple of mags through it. Uh, I'm not sure the exact round count, probably around 150 or so. It is a BCM, so it shouldn't really require any type of extra work to break it in or anything like that. It shouldn't be a part of the, the process. Uh, obviously, AWLS works just fine. We don't have any issues with that. The vertical foregrip, I would probably move a little bit back from where it was, just, just shooting it being comfortable. I felt like it was a little bit too far forward for me. Um, and we did have to move the optic forward as well about five or six rounds into shooting it. We just kind of realized, hey, it's way too far back for comfort for me. Um, so we moved it forward and it worked for the, for the person whose rifle it is. It worked for them as well. Um, the, the razor did just fine. The optic's very nice and clear. Um, we did forget to put a battery in it, so it was dead the whole time. But as it has an etched reticle, that really wasn't an issue. Um, the sling did great. Everything was fine here on the rifle as far as um, the form of it. <clears throat> now function, again, I said for a BCM, it shouldn't need any time to break in, but we were shooting a lot of steel case through it, uh, you know, the pre-COVID lot, and it was not really enjoying the steel case, which is the second BCM I've had that has not liked steel case. And we're talking like not extracting and not feeding and we also weren't even getting full stroke, so this, the bolt wasn't coming far back enough to pick up a new round, which that was very unusual. Um, no issues with anything brass, but that steel case stuff we were shooting really didn't like this gun. Um, and again, that's the second BCM I've had that. My, I had a, a 14 and a half inch previously that would chew up anything you put into it until it got steel case, and then it would start choking, and eventually we actually had stuck cases inside the barrel. And that would shut down a range day pretty hard. So I found it to be unusual. I wasn't really expecting that, but as far as everything else went on the gun, very good. Um, if I would change anything on this rifle, I might change out the muzzle device from an A2 to something I can put a suppressor on. Um, you could put a suppressor on an A2 if you get like one of the B&T cans that are meant for that, but you would probably have to move the AWS a little bit just based on the thickness of the light head there. One thing that I found from this build that we did that I really enjoyed was the sling swivels here, or the, or the studs. So normally you'll find a push button. In this case, they have a little button to push in. You push it forwards towards the mounting system. So instead of having the button, I have to push both sides nicely together. You can see that little piece right there. So I push on both of these towards the little end piece at the same time, and that will lock into the rail instead of having that large center button that could get accidentally knocked. So those are, I like that feature, just a little upgrade, um, a nice little thoughtful piece they did to improve upon that design. Um, charging handle wise, this does not, on the right hand side, does not unlatch it. So you have to still use the right side to unlatch. And it was a little bit stiff too, we noticed. So uh, that was not a negative on the gun, just a functional thing I might change later. Um, I do like having the ability to open it from the right-hand side, and this you have to put pressure on the left side to undo the latch. Um, otherwise, I really don't have any complaints. I think, you know, the gun didn't like steel case. I don't know if that's maybe a spring issue or it's a gassing issue on the gun, but it shot anything else just fine. Trigger's fine. It's the, the standard BCM, so there should be nothing wrong with that either. Uh, mount held up. We didn't zero it before we went out, so that was our, our bore sighted. So we found out that our zero point was just slightly low, but it was, as far as horizontally, it was just low. Um, or sorry, horizontally, it was dead on, but vertically, it was just slightly low. Um, so probably zero it for 100 yards and, and be good to go. But gunshot fine, reloaded just fine, triggers fine, just had that weird finicky issue with the steel case ammo. So thanks for checking out this build. If you have other ideas you'd like to see or other changes you may would do on your rifle, throw those in the comments below. And thanks for checking out our BCM build video.